Hello everybody and welcome to the fifth of the 101 computational problems. Today we're going to be looking at a problem called Primish. So here's Delith Duck and she's just been appointed junior programmer for Red Hot Games and she takes the train every day to work. Today the train journey took 62 minutes with five minute walk to the office and Delith took great pleasure, great please, I need to amend that, in noticing that the total time was a primish number. A number is described as primish if the sum of its individual digits is itself a prime number. So for example, 11, which is a prime number, is also primish because one plus one is two, two is a prime number. 13, however, which is a prime number, isn't primish because one plus three is four, which is not a prime number. 903 is not primish, 9 plus 0 plus 3 is 12, which is not prime. So the task today is what is the sum of all the primish numbers less than 1000? So I guess from 0 to 999, what is the sum of all the primish numbers? So I'm going to go across to my Jupyter notebook and I'm going to start thinking about some of the the repeatable functions, the code that I might need to make this work. And I think there's two things, isn't there? There's, I guess we need to be able to detect a prime number in some way, but also we need to be able to sum up the digits of a given number. So I think that's going to be the easier one, so it's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to define a function called sum of digits of n. And I'm going to think about what I'm going to pass into n. I'm going to pass it a number and I'm going to keep a, a running total as I add up all of the, 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 the sum of all of the digits. So I'm going to start making a, um, a temporary durable, which is the sum of the numbers, the sum of n, and I'm going to set it to naught. Every time I call this function, it's going to be reset to zero. So I'm going to make now a, a temporary variable again. If I've got 123 passed into this sum of digits, I need to be able to go 1 and 2 and 3. I need to be able to iterate over all of the digits. So I need to turn my number into a string to start off with. So y equals the string of n. So now it's a string, I can iterate across all of the elements of the string. So I can now do for i in y, so if I type in 123, it would iterate across 1, 2, and 3. For i in y, this value, the sum of n, is going to be the, the previous value, so which is naught, added together to the value of the current digit. So I'm going to do sum of n plus equals, and I'm going to turn this string value back into an integer. So if I've got 123, it'll turn it into a string and then it will pull out the one, the two and the three and pass them into this function. After it's done all of this, what I want to do is I want to um, return, I want to return out of this function, the value of the, the sum of n. So if into this function, I want to pass, what if I print, and I'm going to do sum of digits and into it I'm going to pass 123. So if I pass 123 into this function, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. So this should return 6 as the answer from some testing. And it does. I press shift and enter in Jupyter Notebooks to run that cell. So print sum of digits 1, 2, 3 is 6. So if I made that, let's just say I'm going to make it 4, 5, 6. So 4 and 5 is 9, plus 6 is 15. So if I run this, it should produce 15. Okay, so I'm reasonably confident that that is the code there that returns the sum of the digits. Okay, so now I'm going to now do some work on the prime numbers. So there's two ways I could do primes. I could use a library and um, SymPy has a library for checking if numbers are prime. Or we could code something ourselves 
2c if the number is prime. Okay, so let's code a function for checking if a number is prime. So I'm going to define is prime. Oops, define is fingers and thumbs is prime of n. Okay, that's my function. And is prime of n. We need to think about how do we check if a number is prime. So there's a couple of scenarios we can consider. If if n is less than or equal to 1, so 1 isn't defined as prime, and anything less than 1, so 0 or a negative number, by definition, isn't prime. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to check if n is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do. So if n is less than or equal to 1 as a test, if that is the case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to return false. So the number isn't prime. It can't be prime by definition. Now we've got another part of the if statement, which is actually for n is 2, 2 is a special case, um, n is 2, we say it is prime. So I could code in here, else if, elif, n is exactly 2, don't need to do any tests here, that is defined as true. And now we've got some other things we can think about. So if n is bigger than 2, but is a, an even number, by definition that's not prime because all even numbers can be divided by, well, at least 2, but probably other numbers have got other factors. So I can have another elif here. And I can combine two statements. If n is greater than 2 and n is divisible by 2, if it's exactly divisible by 2, there won't be any remainder. So I can do n percent 2. So tell me the remainder of dividing n by 2. And if that's exactly 0, so if n is bigger than 2 and it's an even number, I'm going to return false because it's an even number, it's bigger than two, it's an even number, so it can't be a prime number. So I've also now got to consider, we've taken care of one and less than one, we've taken care of two, and we've taken care of all of the even numbers greater than two. So now we've got to do all of the odd numbers, three or greater. And the way you go about doing this, it's quite simple. Um, there are more sophisticated ways, but the simplest way is you pick that number and you divide it by all of the numbers up to that number. So if it's 5, you divide it by 2, by 3, by 4, whatever, by 5. And actually, if it's not divisible by any of those numbers, it's a prime number. But actually, that gives us a lot of calculations to do, and we can do better than that. Because if it's 100, we don't need to divide... 100 by all of the values from 1 to 100, we actually only need to go up to the square root of that value because once we go beyond the square root, you're, you're, produ you're producing the, the other half of the answer. So, for example, 100, that square root of 100 is 10. Okay, So if I divide 100 by 1, by 2, by 3, by 4, by 5, by 6, by 7, by 8, by 9, if I divide 100 by 9, I get two. I, I get an answer, don't I? Okay, but that is then the same as if I divide by that answer, I'll get 9. So I only actually need to divide everything up to the square root of everything to actually find out what the answer is. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm now going to say if it fails all of those tests, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check in the range from 3 to the square root of n. And the square root of n is the integer value, the integer value of n raised to the power of 0 0.5. That's the square root, okay. But I'm gonna go one past that. I'm gonna go one number bigger than that because when we take the integer function, it rounds everything down. So I'm gonna add one here just to make certain that I can't capture this square root, the values up to the square root. 
and I'm going to go up in steps of two. So this will go three, five, seven, nine, all the way up to the square root of the n value. Okay, so now I'm going to, for in that range, I'm going to say if n percent one, n percent one tells me if it's a whole number because I'm dividing by one. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take n and I'm going to divide it by i. So as we go three, five, seven, nine, all the values up to the square root, I'm going to divide n by this value. And if it's zero, okay, if it's zero, I'm going to return a false, which means it would be a factor of that number. It doesn't matter which factor it is, as long as there's one of them, if I can divide by three, it only needs one factor to be false and it's not a prime number. Okay, but if I iterate through all of these numbers and I get to, I go through three, five, seven, three, that doesn't work, five doesn't work. I go through all of the numbers up to the square root of n. At that point, if it doesn't trigger that return false, what I must have is a prime number. So I can test this now. I think that code will work. Okay, let's run this code and see what happens. All right, okay, for i, and then I'm getting a syntax error here. I know what I've done wrong for i in range. And so that should be fine. So print is prime seven. If I run that, is seven a prime number? Yes, it is. Let's try 17. Is 17 a prime number? Yes, it is. Let's give it one that's not, let's say 20. Is 20 a prime number? No, it's not. Okay. So I seem to have two functioning functions, one for taking the sum of the digits and one for checking if a number is prime. So having done both of those two things, what I now need to do is I now need to, what is the sum of all the primish numbers less than a thousand? So what I need to do is I'm going to make a new, a new variable here called prime um, sum, and I'm going to call that prime sum, set it to zero. And now I'm going to do for x in range, and I'm going to go from naught to a thousand, because that will stop at 999 up to a thousand. So that answers that less than a thousand. And in here, I'm going to do if is prime of sum of digits of x. If that is true, I'm going to take prime sum and add to prime sum the value of x. And once it's calculated all of those, what I want to then do is to print out prime sum. So let's just clear, clarify what this does. We've got a range from 0 to 999 is prime sum of digits. So the two functions I've just made, the first thing that happens inside this bracket is I'm passing into sum of digits x. So sum of digits is this code here, which adds up all of the digit values of my number. It then produces an answer, which it pushes into is prime. And is prime is the function here that I've just written that calculates if the number is a prime number. So if, the sum of the digits is a prime number, as in it's true. We take that value, the prime sum, which was naught, and we add to it this value of x. And we iterate through this list, through these numbers from naught to 999. And when it's done that for all of the numbers, it is going to print my prime sum. Okay, so I'm going to run that code now and see what it does. There we go. What have we got? We've got 162,948 is the sum of all of these primish numbers less than 1000. And there we go. We've created two functions. We've created a function to sum up the, the values of the digits, and we've created a function to check if a number is prime. And then into those, we've iterated all over them to produce an answer of 162,948 
which is Delith's answer for a sum of all of the primish numbers less than one less than 1000 so thanks for listening remember to like and subscribe and this has been number five of 101 computational problems